So depending on where you look, the RTX 5050 launched today. We have posts from Inno3D advertising their uh, versions of the graphics card saying that it is on shelf now. Reach out to your local retailers today. And they've even published their own performance graphs. But if you look for actual reviews from people like me, they're not out yet. There's no review sample program for this, which means I'm gonna look to buy one. However, if I try to buy one, I do see them listed, um, but currently not listed in stock. So like if I tried to buy one at Newegg, um, I do see them and at least some of them are at the MSRP of $249.99, but they're not actually, uh, like I said, I can't actually purchase them. Now, as far as I can tell, these didn't go in stock and then sell out. They're just not been stocked yet, but they are showing up at least on the site. Uh, and also Nvidia themselves have released the game ready driver. So if anybody does buy one of these, you can actually use one. So uh, in a sense, the RTX 5050 has launched now, but it's just whenever an actual uh, GPU ends up on store shelves ready to buy, I guess, it doesn't seem like there is any specific launch date. All Nvidia has ever said is in the second half of July, although in the uh, China region, I think I've seen uh, that they just said in July. So. We'll have to see what happens. Now, like I said though, uh, Inno3D, who is not, you know, this is not an independent third-party test. This is a graphics card, uh, you know, board partner. So take that for what you will. They have released some of their own testing numbers though, which I think could at least be somewhat uh, interesting. Now, uh, when I was analyzing this, I was trying to figure out what games are they testing, and so I'm just using uh, the Google Lens to look this up here. This one appears to be Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, where the RTX 4060 is kind of the middle bar here at 118 FPS, and the RTX 5050 is hitting 110 FPS. So the RTX 4060 is faster in this test than the new 5050. So 5050 not quite closing that gap. That's the prediction I had made when looking at the specs sheet uh, that when Nvidia released the specs, uh, I said that um, it would probably fall a little bit short of the 4060. That seems to be the case here. Uh, they're also including RTX 3060 benchmarks here at 99 FPS uh, versus the 110 here. Uh, so it is looking like the uh, 5050 is gonna be faster in raw performance than the 3060. Uh, although um, I'm not seeing any clarification here on whether that's the 3060 eight gigabyte or 12 gigabyte version. I would assume it's the 12 gigabyte version, in which case there's probably gonna be some games where depending on the graphics settings, the 3060 may end up ahead. Uh, if we wanna look at the other games here, and if we uh, go ahead and translate what they are, why does this keep defaulting to translating from Chinese to Chinese? Uh, this one is Borderlands 3, where it looks like the 4060 is getting 90 FPS, the 5050 is getting 86, and the 3060 is getting 76. Uh, this one appears to be, um, uh, oh man, it's why will it not keep defaulting to, to translate in English? This one is Far Cry 6. Uh, where we're seeing 103 FPS on the 3060, uh, the 4060 getting 123, and the 5050 seems to be basically tied in this one at 122. And then down here, we'll translate one more of these, and let's uh, again switch it to English. This one's Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and this one is showing 85 FPS for the 3060, 102 for the 4060, and only 93 for the 5050. I went ahead and typed those in to convert them into percentages uh, where I'm doing the 4060 score divided by the 5050 score uh, to get a, a representation of what percent advantage the 4060 has over the new 5050. Uh, so it's looking like we saw about a 5% lead, about a 1% lead, a 7% lead, and about a 10% lead. So, um, you know, based on just these four games tested, I think it's gonna be hard to get, uh, put together a, uh, you know, exact figure, but it is certainly looking like the 4060 is faster, but probably less than 10% faster than the 5050. So the 5050 is getting, you know, somewhat comparable performance, uh, but the disappointment being then that, okay, so 
this is effectively, like, like some people when, when they saw this uh, launch were basically saying, okay, so it's a 4060 with a $50 price cut. It actually looks to be a little bit worse than that. It is a $50 price cut if you look at the, the at least the lowest price models. There's certainly some models being listed here uh, well above that. Uh, but it's also looking like uh, it's not quite 4060 level performance. It also has the same amount of VRAM. Uh, it would have multi-frame generation support. The 4060 already has normal frame generation support, so I wouldn't make too much out of that. You know, on, on super high refresh rate displays, the times three and times four mode can sometimes be cool uh, as an added feature. Uh, but again, the times two mode that the 4060 would support already gets you, you know, usually over 100 FPS on a 100 FPS display if you're coming from a reasonable base frame rate. So uh, anyway, that's looking uh, like like what we've got here. Again, I do want to make sure we understand that this is uh, not an independent reviewer. This is coming from Inno3D themselves who are a board partner. So um, I, I think it's also just not a huge number of games anyway. Uh, these games, I believe, all have built-in benchmarking tools, so I think they're just running it through a, a simple built-in benchmark. Uh, now, like I said, if we were going to be in um, uh, uh, other tests, we might see other results. Now, kind of interestingly, there's also some synthetic benchmarks that they've published, uh, where it is looking like the 50-50 is at least sometimes ahead of the 4060. But again, I don't even bother with synthetic benchmarks myself because I care about how does this perform in actual games. And sometimes synthetic benchmarks aren't actually representative of how things perform in actual games. But I will, again, say that there's at least some results here where the 5050 is beating the 4060 in these synthetic tests. Uh, so, uh, you know, we'll have to see how things actually play out. Now, um, I, I was looking at videocards.com had an article where they were summarizing some of these performance numbers, uh, but I went ahead and was uh, translating them myself uh, over here and, and double checking it because um, when I was looking at this, I was like, wait, when I was Google translating these, uh, I was getting different game names than what um, uh, what, what videocards.com is seeming to, to list here. For example, uh, the 110 FPS and the 118 FPS and the 99 FPS, they're calling Doom the Dark Ages. But when I look at this slide, uh, that was not Doom the Dark Ages when I translated it. So I, I think they may have just listed the wrong game names here, uh, which is why I uh, wasn't initially using this. But I will link this in the video description. Uh, it, it, but just note that I, I don't think they have the accurate game names on this article analyzing the summary here. Uh, but it does look like their numbers are accurate. So if we just go by the numbers, um, if you wanted to see how the 3060 stacked up versus the versus the 5050, looks like it's reading reaching 88%, 84%, 90%, 91% of the performance of the 5050. So this is also looking like if you're already on a 3060, especially if you have the 12 gigabyte version, the 5050s doesn't look like much of an upgrade. Uh, 3060s have been available. I, they're starting to dry up now, but they were available in that you know 260, 270 dollar ish price new for the 12 gigabyte versions for a while now. So again, another reason why this this 5050 doesn't seem to be necessarily um, uh, really rocking the world with its uh, uh, you, you know entry into the market here. Uh, also, another thing to look at is um, if these prices at all, like I don't feel like these board partners should have any wiggle room to go above the $250 at all. Uh, because if you can get a 5060 at its MSRP of 299, which they are well in stock at those pricing, I like it just seems like the performance gap here doesn't make sense on that. So Anyway, it is what it is. Uh, given these types of performance numbers that we're seeing here, um, it certainly maybe uh, explains why NVIDIA has once again chosen not to release review samples uh, to media. It seems to be the case with all of their eight gigabyte cards so far in this generation. But like I said, I'm gonna keep my eye out refreshing this page. Once something comes in stock, I'll buy one. Uh, I'll get benchmarks to you. We'll have to see when they're available in the United States. Like I said, NVIDIA says second half of July, um, but apparently if you can get one now, they're gonna be available. Now, one other note uh, coming with the um, new drivers is that 
Uh, we're also getting information that after this particular driver series, so not this driver series now, but after this driver series, the 580 driver series, NVIDIA has announced they will be cutting off driver support for GTX 700, 900, and 1000 series GPUs. Um, now that just means you would no longer be getting uh, new game ready driver support and things like that. It doesn't mean you're, if you're just on an old graphics card playing old games, it doesn't mean that you can't continue to play old games on the old graphics cards, uh, but just something to keep uh, aware of um, that we could be ending uh, driver support on a good chunk of those GPUs coming soon. Uh, and let's see, any other interesting news going on today, uh, GPU related? We did see Intel talking about their Battlemage GPUs again, but this seems to be more talking about just expansion into Edge and AI. And that's really one thing that I wanted to uh, look at here though is, okay, so in the current market, what is this 50-50 kind of going up against? Well, ideally we would have Intel's B580 in this price class. Uh, which the B580 in my testing was frequently faster than a 4060. And we're already seeing, at least in the, these early benchmark numbers, that the 4060 is faster than the 5050. So it seems like, again, can't benchmark them against each other myself right now. It seems like the B580 would be faster than a 5050. And it also has 12 gigabytes of VRAM and by MSRP is meant to be at that same kind of price class. Uh, the problem is though, at least in the United States, I'm not seeing it listed at, um, at its MSRP. It has just been like $300 plus every time I check. So, uh, but I have heard from people that in other regions that might not be the case. So depending on where you're at in the world and what availability looks like, it's possible that Intel's ARC B580 could be a strong competitor in that same price class as the 5050, uh, giving you the additional VRAM and possibly a bit more performance. Although again, uh, in my testing, I, I still do find that um, you know NVIDIA's feature set and drivers, despite not having, <laughs> NVIDIA's drivers haven't been quite as good as they usually are lately, uh, were still uh, giving me better results than um, uh, I typically get from the ARC GPUs. Uh, so do keep that in mind. Anyway, uh, so that's what I've got for you guys. It is uh, sort of launch day for the 5050 whenever they do happen to end up on store shelves. <laughs> um, uh, I guess uh, I'll keep my eye out. But um, again, we at least have some preliminary idea that the you know it's a little slower than the 4060, a little faster than the 3060, but with less VRAM. And uh, that's about all we seem to know at this point. <laughs> Hopefully you guys found the video useful and or interesting and have an excellent day.